Today I'm going to show you how to animate. This 1.5 second animation took me around 3 hours to complete. Most highlights, shadows and editing can be quickly done in an editing program such as After Effects to automate it and make the process faster. However, I will be exclusively using Clip Studio Paint EX for everything. Sketching, animating, colouring, effects and compositing. I like to use Clip Studio's default 1920x1080 canvas and 24 frames per second. The first thing is to delete the default raster layer and replace it with a vector layer. This makes sketching so much cleaner and easier. Here I'm animating a simple scene of a girl reaching out for something as the wind blows. Next I'm creating a new animation folder to sketch out the hair. I like to use a different colour each time, such as red, blue or green, so I can distinguish the layers. I am also keeping track of how many hair strands there are, so here I drew 8. I want to keep this as consistent as possible so some scenes don't have 5 or others have 10. For this I animate on 4s, so frame 0, 4, 8, 12 and so on. These will be the main frames. When I animate the main frames I have the in-betweens, this will be on frame 2, 6 and 10 and so on. The reason I only animate on 2s is that the animation frame rate stays consistent, so some parts don't look smoother and some parts look choppier. You want to animate as little as possible, so I suggest you reusing frames. I usually go in reverse order as it saves so much time and you're pretty much only animating half of it. If you want your animation to loop then use your second frame as your last frame. I found that the hair animation was a little awkward so I decided to add an extra frame to help with the timing. After I'm happy with it, I start to animate the next thing. Again I create a new animation folder and replace the raster layer with a vector layer and start to sketch. Next I'll do the eyes and eyebrows. This frame will be moving so I just only need one sketch. Then I move on to the clothes. I have three main frames and two in-betweens for this as it's not necessary to make more. I make a folder called rough and I place all the sketches into it. This makes my file management more easy. Now we get into the lining of the animation. I find this part to be the longest part of animating. So I animate in layers, hair, face, clothes and the base. Here you're just basically tracing all your rough layers to clean them up. I like to use the turnip pen as it has the same line thickness and tapers a little bit at the end. And this is the settings I like to use for my animation lining. You would use black to outline but I decided to use green for some reason. I soon changed it back to black later. So it's better if you start with black to or whatever colour you'd like your line colour to be. I start with the mainframes, then use the clean up line art to make sure my in-betweens are as accurate as possible. So I didn't realise that my recording software would not pick up on some of the recordings, but here is a separate clip of it. So I picked main colour. In the colour settings you want to drag to whatever colour you like, but if there's a specific colour you want then you can use the eyedropper tool and select whatever colour you'd like. When it's all good I work on the next part of the animation, which is the clothes and her jumper sleeve. This is the same process as lining the hair. This is for the same with the eyes and eyebrows, and then the base layer. You only need one layer for these. Once the line is somewhat complete, I double check to see if everything is okay. On the hair layer you can see the base, so I fix this by going back to the hair layer and redrawing that line. Highlights and shadows are next. You'll need a separate animation folder. I call this hair HL, short for highlight. I like to use the red pen for this so I can see how the line of the animation will look. I use the hair line folder as a reference to draw where the highlights will go. The same process once again, animating on fours, then the in-betweens on the seconds. The reason why you want to keep the red line is so you can see it when you turn on the onion skin. Another way of quickly converting the line colour is to go to layer properties and select whatever colour you'd like it to be. The only time you want to change it to a different colour is when you've finished the line animation and you're happy with it. After that we move on to the colour. Here I'm just finishing off the clothes as I forgot to draw the jumper at the back. Then I make a new animation folder for the shadows called clothes shadow. I create a separate layers for the base and later on the hair. For the base I referenced it off the hair because the shadows don't stay in one place when your hair moves. Also clean as you go, as it will be a pain in the ass to erase the lines later on. This just makes the job easier. Because there are too many layers, I decided to put them into normal folders and name them accordingly. Finally, onto the colouring. 
Create a new animation folder and use the default animation cell layer. This is called the raster layer. With the rasters, you can color it and line it. But with the vectors, it's only exclusively for line art. Well, that's what I mainly use it for. It's disabled on there, so you can't do it. Now you can pick whatever you like your, char your character to be. You need a separate layer. I call this layer whatever the base, the head, the hair, color, highlight, or shadow. For example, hair, color, highlight. The highlight and the shadows go in a separate folder of their own. You don't include them with your line art. With the coloring, you create every new cell for every line cell you have. So they just go right below each other. Using the fill bucket, fill in the raster layers with all the colors you want. Then do this with every single layer you have. Because the eyes only use one single cell, you can just finish it off. When I finish the colouring of the highlights, I go back to the folder Hair HG, which has all the red lines. I convert the main colour to white. This is to keep the sharp crispy lines. If you get rid of it, then it will just look ugly. I do this to all the layers that have shadows or highlight folders. So after looking at it with the colour, I thought there was something missing from the animation, especially the hair on clothes. So I went back to the hair line animation and added a few more strokes. This is to make the animation look more fuller and complete and later on I added the shadows to the hair. With the clothes I thought I could use a highlight layer as well. To get that sunset look on her I decided to mess around with the colour balance which again my screen did not catch but here is me messing around with it. I worked on the background next which was a simple sky with clouds. This is where I decided to add the shadows on the hair. Once the animation is complete I move on to the colour grading. I created coloured filters on a separate layer to go on top and lower the opacity. I created a dark one for a deeper colour saturation and a light warmer one to mimic the sunset. I want to create a pan for my animation. So on the top, click animation, then I click on new animation layer, then 2D camera folder. This creates a 2D camera where you can move your animation. You grab all your files and plop them into the 2D camera folder. I like to work in show field guide as a reference on how the final might look. Here on operation on object mode, I move the light blue rectangle. This automatically creates a keyframe. I place it on the left so it will pan to the right. I switch to show camera's field of view to see how the final looks. I like to render the animation each time as the playback button isn't that accurate. I found that the animation looked a little too short, so I decided to extend it a bit. I did this by adding cells. I basically just reused the frames again. Once the timing is complete, you can export the animation. You can do this by going up to File, Export Animation, and click on Movie. And you want to save it as whatever name you want it to be. And on the settings, you want it to be in 1920 by 1080. Make sure you click the 2D animation and make sure it's on 24 frames per second or whatever frame rate you chose. And that's it. You've completed your animation.